Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College, and we're going to be looking at the Chapter 2 practice test. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Each part is going to deal with a different page, and we're going to start with page 1, of course. So it's time to talk about absolute value and how to graph it. So um, what we're going to do is, is remind uh, everyone here that uh, the absolute value turns any value inside of it into a positive the distance from zero. So when you put negative two into the absolute value and then add three to it, that's like saying, well, two plus three, because the distance of negative two from zero is two. So the answer is five. So we're going to plot that point at x equals negative two and y equals one, two, three, four, five. And there we go. There's the dot. And let's now do the next problem, which is going to be putting negative 1 in for x plus 3, which is the same as 1 plus 3. So our answer is 4. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the dot. Absolute value of 0 plus 3 is 0 plus 3, which is 3. So 0 comma 3, the y-intercept of this problem is right there. And uh, now the, the absolute value of 1 is 1, not negative 1. Remember, this is the distance of zero, uh, distance from 0, so 1 is 1 away from 0, so 1 plus 3, that makes an answer of 4. So, there you go. All right, absolute value of 2 plus 3 is going to be 2 plus 3, which is a total of 5. So there's 2 comma 5, and there is what the absolute value graph looks like. There we go. All right, let's go take a look at the next problem here, problem number two. It says at the beginning of 2005, Cardshark.com had already received 650,000 cards at their website. At the beginning of 2009, that number had climbed to 1.4 million, or 1,400,000. Calculate the rate at which the number of hits, now that's a typo there, sorry, at the number of cards is increasing. So the number of cards, I'll have to... There we go, change that. The number of cards, um, cards are increasing. Hmm. So, hey, we, sorry about that. Well, let's actually take a look here. So what we have is um, an actual ordered pair in 2005, that's X time, the independent variable. Card Shark received 650,000 cards. There's our, um, there's our uh, Y variable, our independent variable. And then here we have 2009 where we have 1,400,000 cards. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at y minus y over x minus x. That is the slope formula. And I know the uh, book uses little subscripts here, but let's just keep these in order. I'm gonna, this is my y column. This is my x column. I'm going to go 1,400,000 minus 650,000 divided by 2009 minus 2005. Uh, which gives me, um, actually, if, if you subtract these, and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I didn't actually um, do the calculation step by step here. I subtracted these and divided it by 4, because the difference between 2009 and 2005 is 4, and you get a whole number, 187,500, and this would be at the rate of cards per year. All right, so that's how fast it's increasing. Again, subtract these two values. Um, which gives you 750,000 divided by 4, gives you 187,500. All right, now we're going to do problem 3, and I will move this down a little bit to center it on my screen a little better. Okay, so now it says find the function values. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our values uh, based on what we see here. So it looks like we have f of 3. So we're going to plug in uh, 3 in for every instance of x, so this is 3 plus 4. Ooh, that's written pretty poorly there. All right, and then we have negative 3 times the quantity of 3 minus 5. I should put parentheses when I'm substituting. That's actually a good math technique there. So 3 plus 4 in the numerator is 7. And this is negative 9 minus 5. So negative 9 minus 5 gives me a total of negative 14, which uh, brings us to this point that you must always, always reduce your fractions. 7 fourteenths is another way of saying 1 half, and the negative should go somewhere in the problem. Top, bottom, middle, it doesn't matter, but there should be a negative somewhere in the problem because one of the parts was negative. So there we go. Uh, there's the answer to problem uh, part A. 
Um, now you'll notice that there's two A's and two B's. Well, let's just practice the other A right now, which gives us a little bit tougher problem since it's a negative. All right, we just have to be a little bit more careful when doing this. And this is going to be negative 3 times negative 4 minus 5. So, well, the numerator is going to be 0, and some of you are already going to see, like, well, I don't really care what the denominator is, because 0 divided by anything is 0. But let's kind of just see this through here, shall we? This is going to be a positive 12, and the reason why is according to order of operations, we'll go multiplication first, and then subtract 5. And that's going to give us a 0 over 7, which is a 0. So that is our answer to this part A of problem number 3. All right, let's look at this problem here. we got c minus 4. So for every instance of x, we're going to plug in a c minus 4, and this is where the parentheses are really helpful. And now we're going to have negative 3 times c minus 4 minus 5. Okay, so in my numerator, i got c minus 4 plus 4, so c. And in the denominator, we'll distribute this. So this is negative 3c plus 12 minus 5. So negative 3c 12 minus 5, that is going to be 7. So negative 3c plus 7 is in my denominator. There is my final answer. Okay, let's do the numerator here. We're going to have our x plus 2, and we will substitute that x plus 2 in for every instance of x, and then do some simplification. So negative 3 times x plus 2 minus 5. Okay, so let's do some distribution here. Well, actually, nothing at the top needs to be distributed, so we get x plus 6. Now down below, we're going to distribute this here. So this is going to be negative 3x plus, oops, sorry, minus 6 minus 5. So negative 3x minus 11. And that's as far as we can go here. And that's great. Now, I just want to say, uh, I do have several students on this test try to impress me by saying, oh, look, I can cancel out the C's, but you can't. You can't actually cancel out a, a letter in the denominator and a letter in the numerator unless they're both monomials or both perfect binomials. So don't do any fancy canceling here, folks. You're just, you just don't have the skills to do it correctly, or you'll do it where you think it's applicable, but it isn't. Please, just wait until the later chapters to try to show me that. All right, so for our last problem on this page here, let us go and scroll down to uh, state the slope and y-intercept here and uh, graph it. All right, so the slope. The slope is the number in front of x. So the slope is negative one-thirds. The slope has no x. Do not put an x here. That's the slope, no x in slope. The y-intercept is the number that is all by itself, and it is written as a coordinate. That is something I will be expecting out of all of you here. So the y-intercept is written as a coordinate. So be careful with that. So 0, 2. Let's plug that point in right there. That's our 0, 2 right there. And now let's use the slope. From that dot, we're going to go down 1 over 3, which is the negative rise over run. Now, instead of going down 1 and right 3, you can go up 1 and left 3. It's going to be the same slope, folks. So this gives us our line and our answer to the end of page one. Well, thank you for watching.